Humor me, remind me, what topic are we in again? Integration. But this question has three parts to it, and integration is only the last part. There are three things in total, and two of them come before integration actually starts. So you're probably thinking about this, hopefully, in an informal way, because I've given you enough information to know how to do a question like this. But let's try and give you a bit of structure around this so that you have a bit of a pattern in your head so your brain can go to it quickly. What are the two things you're going to need before you even get to integration, before you can write that beloved squiggly integral sign? There are at least two things you need to know. Anyone want to throw in a suggestion? Yeah. I need points of intersection. I need to know where these two things meet because when I make this integral sign, I need a lower boundary and I need an upper boundary. And finding those is its own thing. It's its own problem, right? So the first thing that I would do it was I would find out the intersections, okay? Why don't we do that and then we'll work out what this second piece is and maybe by the time we've worked out the intersections, you'll have worked out what the middle piece is, okay? How do I find points of intersection? I'm going to solve simultaneously, yeah? So you can see how it's been written. I've got y as a subject in this one here. So I might as well just take that, substitute directly into here, okay? I'm going to get this x plus 2, x plus 6. Yes, happy times. Now, I've got this pesky square root hanging around in there, so it's very hard to work with, but that's okay. If I square both sides, I'm going to get just a quadratic. That's easy to deal with, okay? Now, pay close attention. Let me show you the most common error that happens when students square both sides. The right-hand side's not too dramatic. That's doubled, that's squared, right? And the most common thing, and you'll laugh because I'm pointing it out and making it really obvious, and you've got a friend next to you saying, oh, of course, don't do this. But the number of people who do this in an exam, when there's not someone next to them, and no one's drawing attention to it, is really sad. So this is the most common error, OK? Uh, what have I done? I forgot to square the 5. Now, there's a good reason why your brain does that, because it's concentrating on the thing you're trying to get rid of. You're concentrating on that square root, OK? But it's so easy to forget. And it still looks like a quadratic. And you can still, depending on what kind of numbers you have, you can still solve it and get numbers out and put them faithfully into your boundaries. It only starts to fall apart when you're like, why are my numbers so messy, <laughs> right? So. Just watch out, this comes up in other places like Locus, if you remember that from last year. You often had to square both sides because you'd have like a distance equation. So just watch out when there's two things there. Okay, now this part here, dot, 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 I'm not especially interested in because you know how to handle this problem. This is not challenging. You're going to end up with a factorized quadratic. Has anyone already got it? I think it starts with an x plus 1, and then there's a x Minus 14, right? So I've landed on this quadratic equation. It's factorized because you can expand everything, collect like terms, which gives you two solutions. Now, we're at a juncture point. What, do I do? what are these two values? What do they even mean? These are the, what was I looking for? These are the points of intersection, right? So these two values are going to become my upper and lower boundary. So I'll just store that away. I can write the integral of from negative 1 to 14. But what do I actually put in the integrand? What is going to come next? And this is where this second thing comes in. Hmm. It's between, right? It's between this and this. Think back to yesterday when we were working out areas between curves. What did I do with the two functions? How did I combine them? I, I took the difference, which is to subtract, right? Now, hold on a second. Square root x plus 2, and then this guy over here, which is written in some awkward form. Let's write it in a slightly less awkward form. I can take the difference between these two in two ways, right? I can subtract one from the other, or I could do it in the reverse order. So how do I work out which one comes first? OK, I need a picture of some kind, right? It doesn't have to be beautiful, but it has to be good enough that I can work out what's going on. So I would say order. Or if you want, you could say position, because that's actually the thing you're going to be looking for, which tells you your order. Okay? So I hope you have a rough sketch. Square root of x plus 2. 
Mm, let's think for a second. Square root of x, that's a simpler version. So you have an image in your mind for what the square root of x looks like. What, do, what effect does that plus 2 do? What does it, what does it do? It shifts to which way? It goes to the left. It goes backwards, right? So here's my value negative 2 because you told me to go that far, right? Now, this is a quick and dirty graph, but it's actually going to be useful to me to know what that y-intercept is. Can you work out what it is? It should be root 2, right? To find a y-intercept, you would let x equals 0, y equals the square root of 0 plus 2. Now, I'm going to do something slightly unusual, and I wonder if you can tick over in your brain why I do this. I'm not going to write the square root of 2. I'm going to write what I know the square root of 2 is roughly equal to. It's about 1.4. Okay. Now, you're like, wow, how did you know that? Well, you will know that too when you do the square root of 2 on your calculator enough times. And it's a very common number. Now, why on earth would I go and write it as an approximate decimal when I have such an easy, exact way of writing it? What's the purpose of this picture again? What is the, what is the intent behind this? I'm trying to solve this problem, right? I want to know where the graphs are in relation to each other, okay? So the precision of this number is only important in so much as it helps me work out where these two things are. So remember how I wrote it like this, right? What's the y-intercept of this thing? It's a fraction right now, but that's hard to work with. I'd much rather write it as a decimal. This is one of the best things about decimals. You can compare every number on the real number line um, and not have to worry about denominators and weirdo irrational things. It's 1.2, right? So where's 1.2? Hey, just, just a smidge below, like there, maybe. Okay. Um, gradient of this line is going to be a fifth, so it's super shallow, right? So I'm going to draw something like this. Now this scale is pretty horrendous, but it doesn't matter because I just have my rough picture and now I know where the area is. You can see how bad my scale is. You just have to forgive me for that. But it's served its purpose, hasn't it? I can easily determine order and position from this because I can clearly see in this little spot what's above what. Does that make sense? 